Greetings everybody, this is Emily, N1DID, and today we're going to talk about handy talkie antennas. We all have handy talkies, Baofengs, Yesus, Kenwoods, Icoms, and they all have antennas, but are they the best antenna for you? Let's take a look. So a couple of terms that we want to use first. The first one is, what is a wavelength? Well, from your technician class, you know that a wavelength is the length of one cycle of a signal pretty much of any kind. It could be even light. And you also know the basic f uh, formula for finding the wavelength, which is 936 over whatever the frequency is in megahertz. So if we are trying to find the wavelength of 144 megahertz, which is the 2 meter band, we divide 936 by 144 and we find out that it's roughly 2 meters, 1.98. And this is going to be uh, an important part of our discussion. Also, we want to know what a loading coil is. Well, it's used to change the inductance of a circuit. And it can also be used to electrically lengthen antenna that would otherwise be too short. It can also be used as a trap to, to bake, uh, basically break up an antenna into two or more segments for different bands. And we usually see these as, as the base or the middle of an antenna. And it doesn't have to be always be vertical, by the way. Uh, this is one that was used for a low-frequency telegraph system by AT&T around 1912. Basically, the most simple antenna we use is a half-wave dipole. Each side is one-quarter wavelength. Antennas can be any wavelength, but need to resonate uh, at a specific wavelength. And as we transmit, waves of electromagnetic energy uh, just go off of that dipole out into the world. One of the more common antennas is a quarter-wave vertical antenna. Um, so that would be lambda, which is the wavelength, divided by 4. And in this particular case, we can use an, an earth or an artificial ground as the other half of the dipole. You've probably seen them before. If you've ever seen a ground plane antenna uh, on somebody's roof, I have two of them on mine. And the vertical is a quarter wavelength, and the wires are at the bottom are called radials. They form an artificial ground, and you can make radials flat and, or tilted down like this. This is one that was on a car that I rented um, uh, one time, and uh, I had taken my mag mount with me because I wanted to use it with my handy talkie. And in this particular case, the roof of the trunk lid forms a part of the ground plane. It is, in fact, the artificial ground. And if you want to use this in a house, all the good Elmers will tell you, just put a pie plate underneath it or stick it on top of a filing cabinet or a refrigerator. So the next thing is we want to talk about what gain actually is. And gain is a very theoretical thing. It's compared to an isotropic antenna, which is a theoretical antenna that radiates equally both horizontally and vertically. Think of it as being a giant ball. Antenna gain just is, compared to this, it's how is the power transmitted in specific directions? And gain equals directivity, in other words, is it directional, and the efficiency of the antenna itself. We're going to be focusing more on the efficiency because handy talky antennas are omnidirectional. In other words, they go out in 360 degrees around the antenna itself. So what kind of antenna came with your radio? The standard antenna that comes with your radio is pretty small. I mean, here's a Baofeng that I have, and it's only like five inches long. But if we did the math, Remember that two meters is um, the the wavelength, and the most efficient um, antenna would be a quarter wavelength. So that would be roughly 19 inches, 19.6, in fact. Um, what's going on? How come we can transmit on this antenna? Well, guess what? There's a loading coil inside. This is one that I took and I split apart, and you can see 
that the um, the coil is right there and you can see how that's um, going to be uh, loading that antenna up and making it shorter. Um, unfortunately, the more coil that you have, the less efficient the antenna is. Sometimes you absolutely have to use a, a loading coil, but it does cut down on the efficiency of the antenna. So these are antennas that I have. I have some eighth wave ones, which are the shorter ones, five to seven inches long. Then I have a quarter wave antenna. This is a, a flex, still a flexible antenna. It's uh, more efficient. Uh, as we learned earlier, quarter waves are good. But then you see this thing called a five, five eighths wave antenna. And you can see there's some loading coils in the front in the middle rather, but these are dual band antennas and those coils are there to break up between uh, 440 and 2 meters. I use my 5 8 wave antenna because it's got more gain and it puts the top of the antenna higher above the ground of course, but it collapses down and I can carry it pretty conveniently. The disadvantages are it's a little bit more expensive, probably about two to three dollars more. It's heavier because it's metal and it's not flexible. So even when I put it down and collapse it, it's still eight inches high and it doesn't move. It's a, it's a rigid antenna. The 5 8 wave antenna is a little bit weird, but it's really good. Um, a vertical antenna provides good performance, but additional gain can be um, had by going to 5 8 wave. Um, so we see here a chart, and if you look down at the very bottom, you'll see that um, the, the gain on the 5 8 wave is 5.6 um, uh, dB. 5.6. 4 over a dipole. So if we were to look at our um, our half wave dipole, you know it has zero gain dBd 1.64 and dB. Um, so in this particular case, the most important thing to to know is that um, bigger is better. In, in other words, the more gain in dB that you have here, the better it is. So what kind of range can I really expect? Well, range is going to vary because of many factors, but with a stock antenna, you can probably expect the average reliable range and as shown here in miles. So the best you're going to do is four and a half miles. And, you know, it's going to go down based if you're in the suburbs where there's trees and leaves, particularly UHF doesn't like leaves in an urban environment, <clears throat> going to go down even further. Um, and that's presuming that nobody's in a building or that there aren't buildings, a, a lot of buildings in the way. And inside of a building, because you've got concrete floors, you've got ceiling tiles that are some, there might even be asbestos in a building. So for the most part, you're going to end up with a lot less um, range. So the best range, flat uh, terrain, it'll go up by using a better antenna. Uh, these are all range in miles, and you'll notice from the stock antenna on a VHF handheld, you'll get about four and a half miles, but as you increase the efficiency of the antenna, the range will go up significantly. And then you'll notice one anomaly, which is that the mobile antenna goes down slightly. And it's, it's subjective, and it depends on the antenna, but the 5 8 wave mobile antenna, uh, uh, you're going to have coax, and there's going to be a little bit of loss in the coax and the connectors associated to it. Remember that our handy talkie antennas typically screw right down onto the um, radio, and there's no coax, to, and so there's no coaxial loss. So what does this look like if we map it? Well, if you're down there in the red, that's the stock antenna. That's about the best you're going to get. And remember, this may not be full quieting, but that's about the best you're going to get. With a quarter wave, you could extend that out 
quite a lot. Um, but uh, if you go to with a 5 8 wave, it's going to give you some really good performance. The main thing, though, is that for full quieting, you're going to basically be cutting these ranges in half. Um, you know, if you're, uh, you know, unless you have a, a clear line of sight to the repeater. So there can be dead spots. <clears throat> and dead spots can occur because of a couple of things. Terrain, thick vegetation, like trees and leaves. Um, building design, you know, is it on a, a building or are you in a building? <clears throat> the repeater antenna location and the repeater antenna location on the tower. So if you look at these towers, you know, is your antenna at the very top of a tower that's away from everything else? And there's no other things that are going to, um, it, you know, get in its way, uh, uh, get in the way of its signal? Or is your antenna, which is typically, unfortunately, where amateur antennas are, down lower on the, on the uh, tower itself? And if you're lower on the tower, part of the problem that you're going to run into is that your antenna is going to be blocked in certain directions by the tower itself. By the way, it's also going to be subject to more noise. So the other question is, where are you? Okay, in Connecticut, we have these lovely hills that everybody loves to see. This is a picture of the Merritt Parkway by Route 7. And you can see here that um, your signal can vary greatly when you're traveling. Are you on top of that hill on the far side or on the top of the hill down on the bottom? Or are you down in that gully? So those are going to be those are going to be dead spots, and if you're lucky, um, you won't have a dead spot because that an antenna tower is up on top of that hill on the far side. But if it's not, guess what? You're probably going to have a dead spot. So the last thing I wanted to let you see was this is one of our problems here in Connecticut. Connecticut's not flat although it looks like it on this map, we can actually see it's full of peaks and valleys and, you know, they're all over. If you're down here in Hartford, or anywhere along the coast, you've got a line of sight for a lot of places. But if you're up, you know, here in Litchfield County, there's really not much that's flat. Um, you might find a few small buttes or something that's uh, plateaued, but not much else. So, in conclusion, don't expect too much performance out of the $25 antenna that you got off of AliExpress. Um, you're gonna only going to get $25 worth of performance. Know where your repeaters are and know what obstacles you face uh, getting to them. Invest in a hobby, set a budget, and buy the best equipment you can afford within that budget. But most importantly, Get advice, seek out an Elmer, and ask them for help. This is N1DID, 7-3 everybody, and take care.